Hi everyone, my name is Thomas Miller. I'm a final year PhD student in astrophysics at the University of Southampton. And today I'm going to tell you about Gaussian process, which is a tool that I use in my research. What is Gaussian process? Gaussian process is a Bayesian method for data regression or classification. In general, people use Gaussian process for data regression. However, the concept behind regression and classification is the same. Now, it assumes that the data are a set of random variables that distribute as a multivariate normal distribution. There's a lot, a lot of information in here, so let's break this down. Let's focus first on the second point in here. Let's assume we have this set of this data set in here with a y values and error bars. Now, the assumption is that each of these data points is going to have a normal distribution. So what this is telling us is that a y value it has a certain probability where the, the mean of the value is going to have the highest probability given the uh, normal distribution, this Gaussian distribution that we see here on the right. We're going to call that mu. So that's the mean of the Gaussian. And it's going to have a certain width which is going to be two sigma, two standard deviations. So that's going to be our uncertainty in the y value. So another way of looking at this is that the probability of observing y given x distributes as a normal distribution with a mean of mu and a, um, and a standard deviation of sigma. And this is true for all the other data points in here, or that's the assumption at least. Um, jointly, they distribute as a multivariate normal distribution. Now, um, going back to the first point in here, let's remember a, a base theorem. So that's what we have in here. Both equations are the same, just written in a slightly different ways. So the left part of the equation, we have the posterior, which is the probability of our function, of, sorry, of our model, um, being the true latent uh, function that, describe, that describes our observations. And on the right, we have the likelihood, which is the probability of our y values given the x values and our model. Now, we know that this uh, likelihood, uh, this is just gonna be uh, our normal distribution, our Gaussian distribution, because that's the assumption behind, behind Gaussian process. So that's very simple to estimate. Now the prior is just some prior knowledge that we have on our model, or in this case on the parameters of our model. Let's say we know that the models cannot have some negative value. So that's some prior knowledge that we incorporate in here. And evidence is just the uh, probability of what the y value given x value. And in general, we focus on the likelihood on prior because we want to maximize the posterior. So the probability of our model being the true model that describes the data. And for that, we need to maximize the likelihood. And the posterior is gonna make the predictions afterwards. So if we want to predict uh, new data points that we haven't seen before, so let's say interpolate or extrapolate, that's what, what uh, the posterior is gonna be doing. Now, Gaussian process model consists of a mean function and a covariance mat matrix also called kernel. The mean function, it can be anything. It can be constant, can be a straight line, whatever you want. And the covariance matrix, well, the kernel can have different forms. This is just one example. This is the square exponential kernel, which looks like this. And it has two main parameters. So it has the variance and the length scale. What this covariance matrix or kernel is telling us is just the correlation between uh, a set of or two data points. So if you have two data points very close together, then the correlation is going to be quite high. But if the distance between the relative distance between two data points is very large, then the correlation between both is going to be very low. However, the exact um, shape of this function of this curve that we see in here it's going to depend on the kernel, but also the parameters inside the kernel. Now, in this video, it's gonna, I'm going to show you how, how Gaussian process works in practice. 
And yeah, to start with, we, we have a min function equal to zero, but when we start adding data points, we see how the Gaussian process starts to learn where to go. So this is the data driven part. The data is telling the Gaussian process where to go. And well, with a given uncertainty that depends on the kernel, on the covariance matrix. So you can see how we can make predictions. We can interpolate and extrapolate with Gaussian process. And uh, so let's go with the coding part. There are lots of packages out there for to implement Gaussian process in Python. This one, George, is just one of the many. I like this one because it's very intuitive. It's very easy to use. And um, yeah, so to start with, we import um, the main libraries that we are going to use, the main packages. For example, uh, for plotting, for working with arrays, and we import George for Gaussian process. And for this example, we're going to generate generate some mock data. So we have our latent function, our true function. This is a periodic function in this case. And we have our simulated observations with a given uncertainty. Now, here we just need a few lines of code to, to have a Gaussian process prediction. So first we need the x spread, which is the x values where we want the prediction to be. Then we have the variance and length scale, which in this case I chose some arbitrary values. And we define here our kernel. So we have the variance here, and we have the length scale, which is given to this, um, uh, this kernel function inside George. And then here we create our Gaussian process object, and we feed the kernel into this object, and then we pre-compute the covariance matrix given the x uh, values and the uncertainties in the observations. Then we just predict, and for the prediction we need the y values of the observations and the x values where we want the prediction to be. And this will return the prediction in the y value and the uh, uncertainty with it. And we, here we have on the right uh, we plot our prediction on top of the observations on the latent fu function. And you can see that the prediction does quite well. This, in general, the latent function is within one sigma throughout most of the of the range in here, which is quite good. However, the kernel, the best kernel depends on each case. For example, here we could have used a, um, a cosine kernel which would have done a much better job. And we can also, for example, optimize the parameters here, which would also improve the prediction. So I hope with this, you have a better idea of how Gaussian process works, how to implement it with Python. So Gaussian process is an excellent Bayesian method for data regression. Um, the Gaussian process model consists of a mean function that can be any function that you want. It is usually a constant and a covariance matrix called kernel, which, well, there are lots of kernels that you can use, there are lots of functions uh, that you can use. The best kernel is case-dependent, so if you have some prior knowledge about your data set, then uh, the better, because you can choose the best kernel. And you have to keep in mind this, um, this big assumption that your data set distributes as a multivariate normal distribution, which is usually the case, but not always. So if you have some prior knowledge about your data set, that's very useful. Um, yeah, so there are lots of packages for implementing Gaussian process, which is just one of the many. Thank you very much.